to City very clearly today that we will keep the promise. For me, the promise at the moment is basically a government quangle. It's sitting in an office in Glasgow or Edinburgh when we're allowing a broken system to just trundle along. There is a real risk here that we replicate the exact same behaviour that the promise has said is dangerous. Things will have been really, really hard and may even have got worse. And that's heartbreaking and shameful and it shouldn't be the case. I'm Shadell, nice to meet Shadelle, you. Shadell, nice to see you. In September 2016, an STV documentary revealed a care system in desperate need of reform. Some of those who shared their stories challenged the First Minister to act. I would like you to leave them a legacy, a lasting legacy of change and be part of that movement of equality for these young people. The following month at the SNP conference, they watched the First Minister's response. I am announcing today that we will launch an independent root and branch review of the care system. That was a really emotional day. There was a lot of crying, a lot of laughter. There was a real kind of hope that by us actually kind of sharing our story with her, we'd actually been heard. The care review spoke to more than 5,500 care experienced young people, adults and professionals. At its conclusion, the promise was launched to ensure the change demanded is in place by 2030, although it committed to deliver reform as it went. The promise contains so much good ideas on early intervention, on supporting families to stay together, on helping children and young people be heard, but our advocates are telling us that we're not actually seeing that yet on the ground. And there's also a whole generation of you know, teenagers that have left care and are now struggling very alone in a real time of crisis who have not benefited from that promise that was made. That concern over a lack of progress is shared by others at the heart of the drive for reform. Jamie Kinlochan is a long term campaigner for change. His research has found local authorities continuing to use restraint methods on children as young as five in residential care, despite a commitment to abolish it. He also found young people being taken off supervision orders at the age of 16, meaning they lose out on support, as well as a record number of premature deaths. By my measure, many of the outcomes that led to the review being put in place initially haven't yet been turned upside down. Things are either the same or they're a little bit worse. If we're two years down the line on the promise and we're still saying, depends on where you live, depends on who you ask, depends on whether or not you had somebody with you to help you explain what your views were, that it depends on so many of these things, the chances that you will get in your life, then we haven't achieved the promise and we're not on course to achieve the promise. So what needs to change for the promise to be fulfilled? The First Minister said that we would rip things up and start again if that was necessary. And I think it's hard to see evidence of things being ripped up and started again. I just thought we were going to do more for the people who have to wait on that being the reality. Robert Foster works with care experienced young people before becoming a councillor in North Ayrshire. So how difficult is it for local authorities to put these policies into practice? We think it's going to cost us to do the first part of the promise, about two and a half million pounds. And so far, I think we've received about a quarter of a million pounds in the first two years to hire a couple of staff members. And that's nowhere near enough. And that will be escalated multiple times for a council like Glasgow or Edinburgh or Aberdeen or the Highlands, um, given the number of care experienced people and the kind of geography of that as well. So it's going to have to take serious investment to actually get the promise done. Staff at this charity believe a lack of data around the number of people in care, as well as the continuing stigma within communities, are acting as barriers to radical reform. We support the promise. We want to see the promise achieve um, and we want to go beyond the promise. There's definitely a situation where there's a lot of goodwill in Scotland, and, but we're now in a situation where there's implementation purgatory. It's not happening quickly enough and it's not bold enough. I guess one of the challenges we have at the moment is there are, there are elements within the promise that we know are actively being not delivered. So around the provision of independent advocacy, we know that all children and young people and adults in Scotland don't always have access to independent advocacy. So we need to make sure that that happens. The promise needs to be upheld. It can't, it can't fail and we won't let it fail. So we're really frustrated about progress, but I am genuinely still hopeful as well. 
Can you look those care experienced young people in the eye and say things have improved? So for so many care experienced children, young people and care experienced adults, their lives won't have improved over the last two years and things will have been really, really hard and may even have got worse. But what I would also say is there has never been this level of sustained commitment to implementation. And the Promise Scotland is here to, to drive change, to support collaboration and to bring people on that journey. We can't deliver that change. That change has to be delivered by a whole range of organisations. Those trying to deliver change also point to issues around accountability. Whose responsibility is this? Because it hasn't been legislated for, I don't know who's accountable for the Promise. Is it the Promise team? Is it the First Minister? Is it the leader of a council? Is it the, the principal of a college? I don't know where the accountability is at the minute. One of the things that I'm trying to understand is who's responsible ultimately for this. Because if the conclusion of the promise is us returning to pointing at local authorities and saying you should be doing that differently, we are exactly where we were before the start of all of this, just with a roadmap towards them doing it differently. There's lots of things that we could do now, that Scotland could do now, that would really make a really significant difference. Who could do now, though? Where is the responsibility for that? So it sits across um, lots of different people. It sits with um, social work officers and local authorities in terms of making decisions about where children are placed. It sits with governors of Pullman. It sits with secure care providers. It sits with Scottish Government in relation to how they fund some of these services. Um, it sits, it sits, the difficulty is that it sits with a whole range of people. Should there have been legislation put in place to ensure the funding was there and there was a clear line of sight over who's responsible for implementing the promise? Legislation isn't a panacea, it doesn't sort everything out, so it's getting legislation at the right point in a process to make that um, actually can really affect change. The Scottish Government says it is committed to keeping the promise by 2030 and is working closely with local governments, health boards, charities and the care community to ensure improvements are felt day to day. The aims of the promise are ambitious, but patience is already running thin amongst some. Two years on, the priority is ensuring the momentum to change the lives of care experienced people is not lost. The promise is the best hope we have of fixing this. It cannot be left to go dusty on a shelf. We need to implement the promise. We need to go beyond it. We need to offer lifelong support and advocacy for every care experienced person in Scotland.